listening to PetLifeRadio.com. I'm smelling the dog. I am a mutt. I'm smelling the dog. I'm super smiley. I have a cat too sweet to travel kitty. I have a good girlfriend. Angel's really pretty. I have a pony. We share a big horse. We have a big yard. Yeah, we have to, of course. I have a pool. In the summer, I stay cool. Do a fountain. Live in the mountain. Live high on the hump. Need to be a spokes dog. I'm smiling the dog. Woof and Super Smiles. Welcome to a Super Smiley adventure on Pet Life Radio, the largest pet podcasting and Wi Fi network in the world. I'm Megan Blake here with Smiley, my giant mutt and spokes dog for throwaways. And Smiley is totally excited about today's show because another spokes dog is joining us Max Apooch, a recycled lab who recycles trash right up our alley. Max, with his green mission, has been featured on the Huffington Post, AOL, and USA Today websites. You go, Max. And he's brought along his person, Keith Sanderson, who's going to be doing most of the talking. Hi, Keith. Hi, Megan. How are you doing today? We are doing great. Max is there with you, right? Uh, well, he just ran downstairs. There was a squirrel alert. <laughs> <laughs> well, when he gets back, give him a big hug for us and tell him to stand by for a quick break, and we'll be right back to hear all about what you two are up to. Smiley, can you wait? Good boy. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. I'm Smiley the dog. I'm Super Smiley. Must rock. Buster. You're telling me my dog food products can't go on your shelves? That's right. Didn't pass one of my Petco certified nutrition checklists. Sorry, Wayne. Who made these checklists? Geniuses. Very smart guys. Well, it's good enough for most grocery stores. Do you see cheese puffs on my shelves? Mayonnaise? Soda pop? No. That's because I ain't running no grocery store, Wayne. Your pets will get better nutrition. I guarantee it. Petco. Where healthy pets go. Enter the code LUCKY10. L-U-C-K-Y, the number 10, and get 10% off any order. No minimum at Petco.com. How would you like your business to reach out and invite in our audience? We have a brand new trademark concept called InfoSeeds. InfoSeeds are short 20-second seeds of information about your place of business, practice, or service is the best, most cost-effective way to invite us in. We only have a limited number of slots left. For more information, visit the website. PetLifeRadio.com Click on Sponsorship Information. There you can listen to a sample of InfoSeed. Remember, only a limited number of opportunities are available. Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do. And get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, this is the place for a special paparazzi treat. Only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. We're back on Pet Life Radio, a super smiley adventure. I'm Megan Blake here with Spokes Dog Super Smiley and our Spokes Dog guest, Max Apooch, and his person, Keith Sanderson. And they are two spirits that Smiley and I already feel a deep kinship with. Welcome, Keith and Max. Well, thank you. We've been looking forward to this, and thank you for having us on your show. You are so welcome, and I really mean that. You guys are truly after our own hearts. Our show is a super smiley adventure, and I know that if we are aware of where our animals can take us, they will lead us on amazing adventures, and I think Max is a possum example. So how did you begin your adventure with Max? Well, it was uh, looking at him, and, and I looked at some of our friends, dog friends, and they who were a little older, and they had arthritis. And I said, holy cow, you know, this is great because Max, like many labs and retrievers, loves to chase a ball. But some of these dogs couldn't chase balls anymore. And I said, I wonder if there's a lifetime sport sort of for dogs like for humans. 
And I said, why not recycle trash? Pick it up. And that's how we started. <laughs> so that literally just came to you like, boom, I need an exercise for Max that he can do forever. Let's pick up trash. Was there anything else that, that you just saw trash lying around and knew that he was a retriever? So he liked to retrieve and you just put the two together. Is that what happened? Basically, that's it. I, you know, we, the, the other thing is, too, like a lot of dogs, labs, and retrievers, he, he was starting to get really focused on chasing a ball, almost obsessed. Yes. And so I wanted to do something that would purpose, you know, he's a lab, and so I wanted to do something that would, you know, his lab instincts would fulfill, but not be a green little tennis ball every day. Right. And that's such an interesting comment on dog training as well, because you look at what your dog wants to do, just like with people, what their talents and gifts are. And if they are becoming obsessive or the, the behavior is disturbing, you know, in your lifestyle, then redirect it to something else where it's positive. Right. So that's a great training tip you just gave. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, something that, uh, you know, the, the trainers say, and I, a lot of times people just don't really get but the easiest way i think to train a dog is to a realize they're a dog and b then take a look at their breed and go from there right and that's something that max obviously max told you this in a very 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 clear message right (laughs) well yeah we do talk i mean uh he um has it's a blog but it's called hub pages and uh he tells me what to write and then i write and he does the he does things like reusing, repurposing, and recycling are the three R's of green. And, you know, from a dog's point of view, we can learn things that maybe we wouldn't listen to humans uh, tell us. Absolutely. I see that over and over and over with all kinds of things as a therapy dog, which Smiley is, or in the prison program, the dogs teach lessons that um, a person can say over and over, but somehow the dogs, they just get into that energy space where people get it, right? Definitely, definitely. When uh, Max was uh, demonstrating his recycling at uh, Orphans of the Storm, their big fundraiser last week, people were just totally amazed. And I got questions like, well, where does he find bottles and cans to pick up around here? And I said, every day we walk the same route, and every day they're there. They just appear again. Now I wonder who puts them there. And they sort of look at Max, and he's sitting there smiling. (laughs) How could he argue with me? (laughs) Exactly. So you pick up trash with Max every single day, right? This is part of your routine? Yeah, what's amazing is that we walk essentially the same route. So everything we pick up one day most likely wasn't there the day before. And it really amazes me because we live in a a nice community, very green. And what I discovered and what Max really helped me discover is the reason we don't see it is the park district has people out picking up the litter in the morning before most people are up and walking around. And so Max and I try to get out there beforehand so he can help them. Oh, that's wonderful. The people, obviously, you've been getting lots of publicity, lots of press. I think you were recently on the cover of your your newspaper, your town newspaper. Is that correct, right there? That's right, the cover of the Deerfield Review. And uh, we were on there, and uh, we've just been picked up online by the Chicago Tribune Local. This is for the northern, northern area as far as a featured online story for them. And uh, that's because we posed a question. That question was, can a dog from Lake County, Illinois, make it in Times Square? And that has to do with a contest about me that's being run right now. And Max wants to get on that billboard so he can tell everybody to adopt a pooch. I love that. And you, you all have so many different things going on. Back to walking every morning. Have you noticed that there's any, any decrease in the trash? Has Max actually, you know, have you also, obviously you're making a huge impact on the psyche of people and with the school kids, the kids that you're working with. But so far, have you noticed any decrease at all? People throwing things away? No, because I think we're, we're running into different times. We've only been doing this for a year. Okay. So we're just coming into, we started last autumn, so we're just coming into the cycle of people who were using the facilities a year ago. And okay. those were soccer practices and things like that. Right. And then in, in the winter, what we do, it's really amazing, is we don't find as much trash, but we do find similar things in the same places, such as maybe a discarded orange juice bottle that may be uh, someone on their way to work throughout of the car, around the car window, and about the same place every day. So that's really fascinating. 
Right, it is. Well, I believe, I believe that Max and you are going to make a difference, that eventually these things, like what, what Max is doing, what Smiley is doing, that it will eventually permeate the actual psyche of the people and they will begin to recycle and they'll be, begin to, you know, be more conscious about their choices. Do you, obviously, you believe that as well, right? Well, yeah, I definitely do. I mean, how can you not recycle when Max says it's so easy? Even <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Even a dog can do it. Back to that way of thinking, you know, Smiley talks about throwaways and he and Angel were throwaways. You talk about people being unaware of discarding trash. Um, is there a connection between um, the way of thinking about not getting a recycled dog, as you say it, and not recycling your trash? What is that connection in your mind? Well, you know, I, I think it starts first with the people who litter and the people who just abandon dogs or turn them into an animal shelter both cases, people aren't thinking about the consequences of what they do. Consequences of litter is it creates world problem, and it's something that everyone can do something about. And the consequences of abandoning a dog uh, creates incredible misery for millions and millions of animals. So if we think about recycling, either dogs or litter, we're really adding a long productive life to something that the society, many people would toss away. And I look at Max, and I think he's the best dog in the world, but <laughs> rationally I know there's millions of other dogs like him that each year are put down because nobody wants to find a home for him or cares to adopt him. And every time I look at Max, I, I just think what a, what a crime that is. It just it's, it brings tears to my eyes. I agree completely with you in my heart. I believe also that it is like a crime. These animals are so beautiful and, and they have so much to give and so much to share. And sometimes I'm talking with people and they say thousands of animals are put down every year. And I correct them to what you just said. No, millions are put down. That number is staggering. So thank you again for putting out that message as well. And we, Smiley and I also believe that people are looking for a positive message. You know, often like on some of the TV shows, there's all this drama and craziness and that hangs around for a little while, but the real trends are real positive things that uplift people. And that's what you two are doing. You must believe that as well. Yeah, definitely. I, I think, you know, there seems to be this thing that some people believe they have to do the big thing to change the world. And usually that doesn't happen. And, you know, if you're in sales and marketing, you call those kind of people elephant hunters because they go out looking for the big deal rather than compared to the typically successful salesperson who's out there every day doing the, the real deal. Hmm. And to me, the real deal is going out and doing your part or Max doing his part. And if we all picked up one piece of litter a day, Think how many tons that would be. I'll give you an example. It's the city of Chicago. The Chicago Tribune, in an article, wrote that the city of Chicago collects 25 tons of trash off its public beaches on a typical summer weekend. Wow, 25 tons. Wow. And I'm thinking to myself, and then on top of it, they employ 60 full-time people. Now, this time of budget crunches, they're employing people to do something that doesn't need to be done if everybody would just cart off what they brought in. Absolutely. It's so simple and it, it just it's so logical too. If you bring things onto the beach for a picnic, why not just throw it away? I, I really don't understand this thinking. <laughs> yeah. It just boggles my mind. And it, it's the same with dogs. I mean, here's Max, six months old when we found him. He had been turned in with his papers. He's yes. a registered dog by his previous owners not to a no-kill shelter, but to an animal control facility. And I think they naively thought that he would automatically be rescued. Well, that's, of course, not the case. But, you know, if these people probably bought Max, his first name was Big Boy, on an impulse, and if people would think before they did things, then I think we'd have less problem. But so many times, dogs are bought on impulse. And at six months, he had had no training he was a vigorous, healthy, energetic lab, and uh, we don't think he was ever out of the basement or a crate for most of his life until we got him. 
Thank you so much for doing that for Max so you're able to share him with us and with the world. And there are so many, once again, millions of dogs like that. Our German Shepherd Angel was abandoned in the desert and she's a purebred. We don't have her papers, but it's obvious. She's just the most beautiful German Shepherd. And she was abandoned in in the desert at four months old with her ears duct taped up. So we believe she was actually bred from a puppy mill and they couldn't sell her because their ears don't stand up properly. So if you do want a dog, a purebred, you can go to a shelter and find exactly what you want. You just have to have it fit your lifestyle. Would you agree with that? Oh, exactly. Either a shelter or the breed rescue organizations because they they really do help a lot. And, you know, you can look at both. And, you know, I read someplace, somebody was on uh, a blog somewhere, the myth about finding purebred dogs at shelters. Well, I don't know about all shelters, but at Orphans of the Storm, they say about 25% of the dogs they take in are purebreds. Oh, and I think that's probably because exactly what you said. People see the image of this this particular breed that they want or they see them on television or in a movie and they go get it. And it's not at all what they bargained for. They're way in over their heads. And, and that's, again, you need to look and do your research with what, what really is a fit for you. Exactly, exactly. Uh, some people down the street, they, their daughter, who was 18 and had credit cards, she was in college, on impulse while she was home one summer, bought a puppy at a pet store, and she brought it home. And the parents said, oh, no, we can't keep this. You can't take it back to school. And rightfully took the dog back to the pet store to return mm. it. Yes. The pet store wouldn't take it back. Right, right. So, so here's another case. They kept it, but and they were good enough, and they, but they're not really, their heart really wasn't into it because they weren't really looking at that time in their lives to have a, a dog and the responsibility for it. And again, it's another impulse buy and somebody looking at those cute little puppies in the window and look what happens. Absolutely. Those cute little puppies are going to grow up to be big old dogs that need to <laughs> be socialized and fit in with your lifestyle. And Keith, I want to hear about the three R's, but first, Smiley is giving me that look. It's time for a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Good boy, Smiley. Sit. Day. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. I'm Smiley the Dog. I'm Super Smiley. Let's rock. Love your pets but wish their medications were a lot less expensive? They are at 1-800-PET-MEDS. You'll not only save on flea and heartworm medications, but on prescriptions for arthritis, incontinence, thyroid, and more. And you get fast service, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Plus, our licensed pharmacists ensure accuracy, monitor drug interaction, and more. See why over 5 million people have trusted their pet's health to 1-800-PET-MEDS, America's largest pet pharmacy. Call now or order online. Go to 1-800-PetMeds.com forward slash adventure, A-D-V-E-N-T-U-R-E to get 10% off any order and free shipping on orders of $39 or more at PetMeds.com. I don't make any decisions about who to hire without going to Angie's List first. You'll find reviews on home repair to health care written by people just like you. With Angie's List, I know who to call and I know the results will be fantastic. Angie's List you can trust. Go to Angie'sList.com forward slash super and get 25% off any subscription. That's Angie'sList.com forward slash super. S-U-P-E-R. Hey guys, this is Skyler Samuel. Hi, this is Rochelle Seth from the Twilight franchise. Hey, what's going on? It's Tyler James Williams from Everybody Hates Chris. Hey guys, it's Caroline Sunshine from the new movie Marmaduke. You are listening to the amazing, unstoppable Christian Powers. Or Pets Rock. Pets Rock. Pets Rock. Pets Rock. Pets Rock on Pet Life Radio. Hey everyone, this is Christian Powers of Pets Rock at Pet Life Radio. We'll see you next time. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Pets Rock! Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Dot com. And we're back on a super smiley adventure with Max Apooch and his person, Keith Sanderson. Hey, Keith and Max. Hey, we're good <laughs> to go. So Max is still looking at that squirrel. He's, uh, <laughs> he's down there. 
And uh, Max thinks that squirrels are alien invaders and his purpose on life is to uh, protect planet Earth. Rid the world. <laughs> the yeah. And, and the reason he does is, he, you know, it's very logical. He chases them up trees and they disappear. So they must be able to go back out into outer space. So. That's, it's so logical. I totally get that. And I think Angel and Smiley would say, of course, of course, of course it's like that. Tell us about the three R's you mentioned. It sounds like something very important we need to know about. Right. Well, the recycling, reusing, and repurposing. And, and again, a dog like Max is a great example. He was recycled when, when orphans saved him from the animal control facility. And that's what happens when we can, uh, you know, when we have something that's old, we're going to discard, we can recycle. And then it can be either reused. And I have a sister who's a master gardener and also an organic gardener and, and very environmentally sensitive. And she u- reuses all kinds of things uh, rather than even recycling them first. And uh, she she taught me a lot about that. And then Max, again, he's being reused and in fact repurposed because his repurpose in life one thing is making Helen my wife and I very happy to have a companion like Max and then the second thing is of course picking up litter and spreading the message that again that's so something so easy even a dog can do it <laughs> I like that that does sound like obviously your message is is recycling repurposing reusing and it does sound like your most important message is just just recycle even a dog can do it right that's exactly right <laughs> and yeah. it's so great what you're doing is worthwhile it's green you're providing a great example to the world i mean we just applaud you so much this is really really wonderful and it's a fun example too you're doing it with fun and with with whimsy which i love that as well well, it really is. And, and one thing about this recycling thing, and we don't think about it too often because we're humans and we have egos, but dogs sort of are down to earth. And Max has recycled me because I'm a cancer survivor. And two days after I returned from work, uh, I was let go. My job was terminated. Oh. And it was a terrible shock. And I went around pretty depressed and I'm not a young person anymore so it was and with the recession it's very difficult to f- find a job and Max he recycled me he he's repurposed me and reinvigorated me and and is really proof of what what having a dog can do as far as uh, the relationship is concerned and I think that uh, a really good example of that is that uh, the Navy SEAL dog Hawkeye at yes. the funeral, just lying there. I mean, if you watch the video of it, that dog, he's just lying. It's almost like he's sobbing. I mean, it, yes. It, and there's a knowledge and a bond there. And, of course, there should be because dogs have spent 12,000 years or more of evolution studying humans. So uh, I think in some ways they know us better than we know them. I agree completely. And Keith, this shows how connected we are and how how we are so on the same level because my next question to you was about the inner journeys where our animals lead us. I know that animals are healers and teachers and it's obvious that Max is a teacher to the world and I was going to ask you, what has he taught you in your personal life? And you just shared it with us so, so beautifully and I agree with you. All animals are teachers if you're simply open to what they have to show. Don't you believe that with all pets that we could get? Oh, exactly, exactly, because they can sense things that we can't. And again, we tend to think because of our intelligence that something we're not aware is something that doesn't exist. And, you know, you think you take with a, I did a review of a book about the Marine Corps war dogs during World War II. Yes. And, well, actually, Max did the review. But these dogs on uh, Wake Island, there was never uh, a, a patrol that had a dog with it that was ever ambushed. And, and that's really? Incre- that, yeah, it's just an incredible story. In fact, there's a cemetery out there for 25 dogs that were killed in action, and there's a monument to them. And the cemetery is part of the Marine Corps Cemetery there. It just, it's just incredible. And you read about it, and sometimes when the um, human marine was killed or wounded, it would be almost impossible to get him away from the uh, uh, marine dog because the dog was so protective and so loyal to his master 
Uh, right. You, you know, the separation was just incredibly difficult. And um, that had a good ending. The, the Army was going to destroy all the dogs, the Marine War dogs, because they didn't think they could be repatriated back into the United States. Right. And, Repurposed, as you would say. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and, there were, and there were 545 of them. And the person who was their commanding officer for that, that part of the Marine Corps pleaded with the Department of the Navy. And they rehabbed, repurposed. 550, I believe, out of 554. Yeah. Uh-huh. And these dogs went back to their original owners because uh, when the war had started, these dogs had been donated by their owners. And that's one reason the commanding officers fought so hard. And plus, right. he'd been there with them and seen their loyalty, and he just couldn't do that. It's, a, it's an incredible story. That is an amazing story. Thank you for sharing that. And um, animals do show us. They show us how to connect on a very, very deep level. And I believe that they, in doing that, they remind us to connect with ourselves, for us to look inside and remember who we really are, not just be so caught up in the daily life all the time. That My animals remind me of that every single second. And I'm sure Max does that with you as well, right? Oh, exactly. I mean, there's no ego with Max. You know, as humans, <laughs> we do have an ego, but our, our pets and our dogs, you know, it's like, oh, give me a pet on the head and, you know, tell me when I do wrong. <laughs> but more importantly, tell me when I do right. I guess I'd been lucky and, and through the years that I was working, I was always very successful with managing people. And one day the president of the company from whom I worked, asked me, he said, Keith, what do you do to, you know, really, because I notice when there's a vacancy in your department and um, people just want to get into your area. And I said, well, you know, basically I treat my people like dogs. (laughs) And he looked at me. I get it. (laughs) Yeah. And and he, and I, yeah, he didn't though. And I said, (laughs) I'm just straight with them. You know, when they do well, I tell them, I tell them what I expect. And I don't go beyond what that, and I don't really, you know, and I never, never chastise them or embarrass them. And he looked at me and he said, you know, I like that, but I don't think our HR department would ever buy it. It's too easy. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's not going to end up in their policies. Treat your employees like this. <laughs> but I get it. That's wonderful. And tell us, uh, Max is on a campaign to be in Times Square. Tell everybody about this one. Oh, this is great. He's in the top 5%, and I can't believe it. And it's about me, which is a social kind of networking site. And I didn't see any rules that said it had to be just humans. So I entered Max, Max A. Pooch. And, in fact, if you, you go to Max's website, www.maxapooch.com, there's a picture there of Max right on a billboard in Times Square that I I did with a uh, little digital magic, along with a link. So if any of your listeners would like to vote for Max, we'd really appreciate it because we think this would be an incredible way to spread the word about just what kind of great dogs are waiting to be adopted. That's a wonderful idea. I love that idea. Yes, and that, about me, that um, the website's really cool too. Smiley and I joined that. It's just a really fun thing. Say your link again so everybody can get that. It's www.maxapooch.com. Very, very cool. Very cool. And I just mentioned Smiley is a spokes dog. He has a spokes dog alias as well. When he comes out of his phone booth, he's super smiley, spokes dog for throwaways. And he's the inspiration for the super smiley flash mob for pet adoption that's been touring the United States. And we would love for you and Max to come dance with us. Are you traveling or do you stay in Illinois? Where are you? Well, we're in Illinois right now. And usually when we travel, it's it's towards the East Coast because that's where my family is. Uh, Oh, we've danced in North Carolina, Florida, and we're going to New York for a Halloween party, a doggy Halloween party, and we would love to invite Max and you to come dance with us. That'd be so much fun. Oh, wow. That sounds great. That sounds great. <laughs> I'll have to check with Max, but I think okay. he, he, he's, Max is up for most of anything. Again, you know, that's what's wonderful about dogs. It's not like humans. You want to go to New York? No, says a human. I, I have to pack. I, have to, I say to Max, you want to take a ride to New York? <laughs> Oh yes. boy, let's go, let's go, let's go. So all dogs have to hear is the word "Do you want" or "go," and they're they're like, "Yes, do you want? Yes, go, yes, 
That's what they are. And yeah. um, Smiley's webpage where you can see his videos is at supersmileyflashmob.com. That's our YouTube channel. And also, Smiley has a Facebook page at Super Smiley Anniversary Tour. Does Max have a Facebook page where we can talk with him there? Uh, it's just starting. Go to Facebook and look for Max A. Pooch. And, Max uh, A. Pooch. Got it. Right. On Facebook. Right. Good. So on Facebook, it's Max A. Pooch. And then his um, website is maxapooch.com, right? That's right. Okay. And, and then he also has on hub pages a uh, at maxapooch.hubpages.com, which is where his articles are. And oh. they're about the reusing, repurposing, recycling. He found one photo that was really great on that. And the photo, the headline is environmental protests create tons of litter. <laughs> oh. he, he said, here's an irony, a litter picker upper at an environmental festival. You'd think a gathering such as this would produce a litter free field, but that's humans for you. <laughs> it is. No, I've actually heard of this where they've been green festivals and, you know, with all the booths and everything. And then when, when they leave, there's lots of trash and that is an irony. Yeah, so anyway, I'm glad that you're laughing about it, find the humor in that. And is there anything else you would like to share with everybody before you go, Keith? I've had such a wonderful time talking with you and sharing these these like ideas. What would you like to tell people before we go? Well, you know, the the whole thing about the environment, I mean, Max got accused of being a left-leaning liberal lab because he's into <laughs> recycling. Yes. And, you know, I thought about that and he thought about it. And he says, well, you know, you don't have to lean to the left or to the right. You just have to bend straight ahead and pick it up. And then he looked at me and he said, I think that guy was just using some alliteration. <laughs> Max is a very smart boy, isn't he? Wow. Well, yeah. But see, <laughs> most of our pets are. All we have to do is learn to listen to them. That's right. And that's the key. Just listen to them because they're so much smarter than we think. Absolutely. Uh, or a lot, at least a lot of us think. And that's what oh, you asked me before with things he's taught. And that's another thing Max has taught me is that yeah, you better listen because sometimes things are happening that we're not aware. That's right. If you just listen to the dogs, they will show us. That's what I believe. Exactly. Exactly. Well, thank you so much, Keith and Max, out there looking at the squirrels for being with us. And before we go, we always have to do our super important shout out to Toyota's Pet Safe Initiative. Buckle up, harness up, super smile, and enjoy your adventure. Thank you again, Max Apooch and Keith Sanderson. We wish you the best of luck, and we'll be looking for you in Times Square. Until next time, I'm Megan Blake, who is Super Smiley, Woof, and Super Smiles. Let's Talk Pets. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.